Welcome, everyone, to the Coin Bureau podcast. His name is Mad Mike Mooch. My name is Guy, and this is the first episode of the podcast we've recorded remotely. Mm. That is right. Uh, Mikey, your restraining uh, order has finally been been put into place. (laughs) (laughs) Finally, I've managed to get you away from me. Um, Mikey, you're in London, is that right? Yes. And I am here in Dubai. Uh, where I've been for, this is my third week in Dubai now. I thought I'd just briefly kind of mention uh, to people who sort of haven't been keeping up why I'm here in Dubai. Um, basically, I think I've been, I've been mentioning it to you sort of on and off for a while. It's been kind of in the works mm. for a bit. Basically, I've come out here to kind of see what's going on, really. I've, I've been speaking to so many people in the space and like that you can't really talk to someone in crypto who kind of works in the industry you can't really talk to them for very long in my in my experience without sort of dubai coming up in in some way shape or form so yeah i kind of thought i've just got to get out there spend some time there loads of people you know kind of wanted to meet and all that sort of stuff so we're doing that um and obviously we've got a few kind of coin bureau uh, staff members who've been who are based out here already so they've managed to sort us out with a nice little office and studio that we can use and um yeah it's it's great and uh got the f- sorry what were you gonna say no i was gonna say it's kind of like it's kind of like when la and hollywood is to movies dubai is really becoming that for crypto you know it, it is the yeah. epicenter of crypto at the moment there's a lot of people are moving there a lot of people are are, are based there and, and and there's big conferences and the government are very uh favorable for it uh so i think it's it, it, it's uh, it's. I understand why you're there. You know, if you if you're yeah. going to be making movies, you'd be you'd be in L.A. or Bollywood. Do you know what I mean? Those are the two places yeah. that that uh, <laughs> are the 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 big film house uh, epicenters. Yeah, and and Nollywood apparently. Nollywood. Reading the the, the, Nigerian, Is that the Nigerian one uh, film. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, I, I I have to check this because I'm go, I'm going into this factoid completely blind. But I think. I remember reading that Nollywood's output uh, puts both Bollywood and Hollywood to shame. Um, wow. I'm not. I, yeah, they apparently they just absolutely churn it out there. I'm not sure of the overall quality, but yeah, it's certainly think, uh, a massive, a massive industry out in Nigeria. I think that's kind of the charm of a, of some of these films. I've seen sort of like the action films in in Bollywood, where it's just if you think our action films are over the top. <laughs> you should see some of the Bollywood ones, and I imagine wow. the Nollywood ones are, are are probably of a similar ilk. Yeah. Oh wow. Well, that's uh, that's going to be my weekend watching this weekend. I've got to find myself a Bollywood let's not, let's, and Idelia. Let's, and let's not. be let's be perfectly honest. That's not going to be your weekend watching. You're going to be glued <laughs> to Ethereum this week. That's right. That's right. Yes. You're right. You're right. Um, which actually kind of neatly brings me to this. It's almost like we're it's almost like we're on the same wavelength here, Mikey. It kind of brings <laughs> me to what, what I was going to talk about uh, briefly in this episode, other than have a lovely catch up and sort of talk about the Queen, etc. in Dubai. Um, yeah, basically, we're in a kind of weird situation in crypto at the moment, because really, the merge, Ethereum's merge, which we've talked about a few times now, is really the only story in town at the moment. Um, but I thought as well, as well as kind of talking about what the merge is doing and, and or, or hoping to do, uh, actually, I thought we could look past the merge a little bit as well, because there are some there are some important things to to consider. Um, but yeah, it's it, there's absolutely no doubt that this is a really big moment, not just for Ethereum, but for for cryptocurrency in general. And actually, the the, the best analogy I've heard of it so far has come from the Ethereum devs themselves. Uh, they compared it to um, changing the engine on a rocket ship uh, in mid-flight, uh, <laughs> which I think is <laughs> that's gonna that's that gonna just. Uh... Yeah, just uh, just just fill everyone with uh, confidence. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Basically, the merge is is the switch to proof of stake. So, the execution layer, which is the current Ethereum main chain, if you like, that is going to join with this new proof of stake consensus layer, which is the Beacon chain. 
Um, so this, you know, and this is the kind of big mid-flight rocket ship engine switchover, uh, if you like. And yeah, it's it's unprecedented kind of in the history of software as well. It, and, and I think this is part of the reason why Google is kind of making a big deal of it as well. I think anyone who anyone who works in in computing, anyone who kind of understands just how much work has gone into this, uh, I think can un even if they don't work in crypto or aren't particularly interested in crypto, I think you can still appreciate that this is a massive, massive job. And you know, changing the entire consensus mechanism of the second largest cryptocurrency by market cap, the busiest networking cryptocurrency, you know, as we've talked about before, it supports so much of what is going on in the crypto space, which is why it's it, it's so relevant to to really everyone. Um, and yeah, the, the, I guess the kind of the big headlines for it, if you like, um, a lot of what the I suppose the mainstream media is focusing on is that this switch to proof of stake is going to dramatically reduce Ethereum's energy uses. So uh, usage. So the uh, what the Ethereum website is saying is 99.95 percent drop in how much energy the Ethereum network uses, which is which is pretty pretty significant. That's uh, a lot. I think I'm, I'm, that uh, is a lot. I'm, yeah, I'm no mathematician, but. That's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a fairly bit. That's a higher percentage than I ever got on <laughs> on any <Anything>. exam. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's um, it, it's a it's a huge it's a huge moment in that, and obviously that has implications for for Ethereum, for cryptocurrency, and obviously for ETH, uh, the you know the the native asset of Ethereum, because the speculation is that obviously. Um, uh, environmental, social, and governance um, investing is ESG is now a really big thing, and there's a lot of speculation that institutional investors haven't been comfortable about the idea of investing in, in you know in ETH in in the Ethereum network because it uses proof of work, which is obviously very energy intensive, and that doesn't fit in with the ESG goals that have kind of taken over you know, everyone's kind of all sort of mainstream investment thinking if you like so is that through um big big like investment companies like blackrock yeah yeah so esg kind of esg kind of grew out of blackrock um it was the it's very much the brainchild of of larry fink who is the who is the blackrock ceo and and he wrote a he wrote a kind of memo uh, to you know, to all these firms and uh, you know all these kind of big uh, corporate entities and government entities, you know, talking about the uh, what he saw as the importance of um, of ESG, you know, an ESG switch in how in how people invested, and that has very much that has very much taken over the narrative around investing now. So. Yeah, the fact that the fact that Ethereum is going to be is going to be consuming, you know, virtually no electricity compared to what it, it to, compared to what it currently does is is big news. And um, yeah, a lot of people are, are expecting that we will see a lot of institutional investment in in ETH kind of post merge. The other big the other big kind of headline, I guess, if you like, about the merge is the fact that ETH itself is going to become a, a deflationary currency. And this is this is something that a lot of people have picked up on as a really bullish case for ETH long term. Um, basically, you know, in a nutshell, more ETH is going to be burned through transaction fees, through the network being used than is actually being issued. So the overall supply of ETH post merge is expected to decline. And obviously, uh, when you're talking about an asset, if the supply uh, declines and the demand stays the same or increases, then the price of that asset will will go up. That's you know that's fairly that's fairly basic economics. Um, and you know so some people have um, they're saying uh, the move to proof of stake where ETH issuance is expected to drop from a little over four percent to under half a percent. So basically about a 90% emission reduction. Um, and some people have compared this. You, you remember me talking in the past about the Bitcoin halving? Yeah. 
So, yeah, so this event that happens kind of every four years or so when the amount of new Bitcoin, the amount of new BTC uh, awarded, issued. you know, issued, yeah, issued with each block is cut in half. And that is generally, you know, that is generally, or that has so far always been very bullish for Bitcoin's price, you know, that the, 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 the issuance drops. Um, and this, the, the the amount the amount of decline in issuance that ETH is going to see is expected to see post merge, uh, this ninety percent. Um, people are comparing that to basically three halvings. You know that, that's that's wow. the the sort of effect we're talking about. So if you hear this term triple halving being being kind of kicked around in relation to the merge, that's what that's what people are referring to. So. Yeah, there is there is a lot of speculation um, that this is going to be, you know, if this is if this goes to plan, if it's successful, uh, this is going to be very very bullish for for Ethereum in the, in the long term. And I mean, I subscribe to that view as well. But again, I'd I'd urge caution. I think a lot of people, and I think this is as good a time as any really to kind of talk about a few of the misconceptions around the merge as well. Um, because, yeah, uh, some people are kind of still under the delusion that, uh, you know, post-merge, Ethereum is suddenly going to become super fast and super cheap to use, and it'll be, you know, quote-unquote finished, uh, which is which is not true. And in fact, Vitalik himself, um, should I cross myself when I say that? I don't know, yeah. probably. <laughs> uh, <laughs> What should, how should we acknowledge that? Maybe we should make a sort of Ethereum triangle on our heads whenever we say yeah. Vitalik. V Vitalik has spoken. Praise be to Vitalik. Uh, he <laughs> has said that postman. <laughs> so lame. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> he has said that uh, post-merge Ethereum will only be 55% complete which I think is, is, is kind of exciting, really. And again, if you refer to the Ethereum website itself, um, it says of the merge, this sets the stage for future scaling upgrades, including sharding. So although the merge is a massive moment, although this switch to a proof of stake network is, is so, so important, it's kind of, it, really, it's just the beginning of the next phase. Mm. So no one should see it as uh, you know as as an end. You know, it's just it's the end of one phase, uh, but the beginning of an uh, of an entirely new one. It's kind of like when and Facebook did like uh, they'd they'd introduce a new uh, sort of layout, and everyone would lose their shit about it, and we go, like, oh, I want <laughs> the old Facebook back. Oh, I mean, no, it's, it's all terrible now. And They've then, ruined you know, it. They ruined Facebook when. <laughs> And then, you know, t two months later, no one's talking about it and they're, they're using all the new features or an operating system update. That's probably more of a, a yeah. analogy. I'm just uh, here to do I analogies like... every now and again. <laughs> you're just you're absolutely firing the analogies out. For, today, those, Mike. It's, it's for, for you listeners who don't understand what Guy is saying, which is perfectly clear and reasonable, I'm just here to think of some stupid analogy of a, rec of a fucking rocking, rocket crash or, or, or social media update. What's interesting to yeah. me, though, is when he says 55% complete, so is Ethereum just like a game? Like, is he going to complete it? What happens when you complete <laughs> Ethereum? What is the end goal? What are the what is the the sort of final plan that he's got for it? That's a that's a good question. That's a good question. Yeah, it'll just say it'll just say game over. Thanks for playing. Done. <laughs> no, but I mean, all, like, the, he, he, all the ETH will evaporate. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure there are a lot of people out there who who genuinely believe that. All these people who sort of say ETH is a ETH is a scam or ETH is a Ponzi, Ethereum's a Ponzi scheme. Um, that's a good question uh, because yeah, there is a lot. There is a lot still to happen, and because this is because this is cryptocurrency, um, because we are dealing with you know, real next level nerds here. They've somehow managed to make the next few stages of Ethereum all rhyme with the word merge. Okay. So uh, we've got to look forward to the next thing is going to be the surge, followed yep. by the verge, followed yep. by the purge, uh, oh, and God. followed finally by the, by the <laughs> splurge. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> what happens with the purge? 
<laughs> you don't want to know what happens with the purge. Yeah, Vitalik's like, let's not let's not go there. Um, yeah. No, I'll I'll. T- I'll talk through what t- I'll talk through what those uh, what those all mean in a minute, actually. But I think in the context of what I was saying earlier about people expecting a lot from the merge, I think it's it's worthwhile to to look ahead and, and consider these other stages. So, uh, yeah, before I do that, for any anyone anyone who's sort of um, uh, finding the whole business of the merge confusing and kind of wants to learn more about it. Uh, obviously, we've put out some videos on Coin Bureau. We, we've talked about the merge a lot, so you can check out you can check it out. There's also a video that I put on Coin Bureau Clips a few days ago, uh, how to prepare for the merge, which you know I, I suppose you really should have watched by, by now. But uh, that is worth that is worth checking out. But um, I want to recommend one, um, which is actually the Ethereum website has actually uh, pinned it. Uh, themselves. Um, it's by a channel called Finematics. Um, and I've actually met the chap uh, who works on Finematics. He's a really, really lovely guy and very, very smart. Um, and Finematics, spelt um, F-I-N-E, Matics, is a really, really good channel. It kind of uses... Um, it uses graphics, kind of, you know, to to explain what he's talking about. He he focuses on on DeFi, on decentralized finance, but um, uh, he's got a particularly good video about the merge, and it's kind of all laid out with with sort of pictures and diagrams to help um, help people understand. So. Um, yeah, anyone listening or, or watching for that matter who's who still kind of f- finds the finds the whole merge thing a bit confusing, do check that out. Um, that's either on YouTube at Finematics or, or the Ethereum website itself. And on that Ethereum website, there are loads of good kind of explainers about the merge and you know a few uh, a few sort of FAQs if you like things like that. So well worth checking out. Shall we round it off um, by just talking about the uh, the surge, verge, purge, and splurge? Yeah, I think that's uh, that's a good good sort of way to round off this this mini yeah. uh, Ethereum uh, app. Yeah, yeah, I think so. And um, obviously, well, yeah, I, to, to to look ahead. Are we gonna go? Are we gonna go in that order, or are we gonna go in reverse? Ooh, um, I think uh, we'll go it, in order. It, because it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, I think uh, one you know one can't happen without uh, you know the, they they have without to a purge in, there is no splurge. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, so yes, so as I said earlier, Vitalik himself, for it is he, uh, claims that Ethereum will only be fifty five percent complete post merge. So the next stage uh, after the merge, assuming that's all successful, is the surge. Now, in a nutshell, this is going to be the addition of shard change, this sharding um, that we've talked about before as well. This will be kind of additional chains running alongside the Ethereum main chain. And that is is going to bring, that is expected to bring this holy grail of kind of faster transactions. Um, and the uh, Vitalik has said, uh, you know, he's targeting 100,000 transactions per second. Which, when you consider that Ethereum, you know, currently proof of work, but not for much longer, when you consider that it's currently 15 to 20 transactions per second, that is, you know, that is a big, big increase. And if they if they manage to do that, if they pull that off um, 100,000 TPS, you know, we're talking we're talking serious scalability, serious usability here for Ethereum. So that's the surge. Now, we we don't really know when this is going to happen. And I think probably it's it's not worth speculating on that until we're actually past the merge itself. Uh, but the surge is certainly the next stage. So uh, the surge will bring kind of faster transactions, hence the name. The next one is going to be the verge. Now, this is going to be sort of a number of upgrades to make it easier to become uh, to become a validator on Ethereum. And obviously, as you know, the validators are the ones rather than, you know, the validators on a proof of stake network are those who, you know, who stake ETH and process transactions rather than miners. And obviously, the more validators there are on a proof of stake network, the more decentralized and therefore the more secure that network becomes. So the Verge is is going to hopefully encourage that decentralization, make it easier for people to become validators on Ethereum. So that's another that's another big big step. 
After that is the one that everyone's worried about, obviously, the purge. Um, this is when it turns violent and, and bloody. Um, now, this is basically the purge is kind of a purge of old network history. And again, this is kind of aimed at decentralization and making it easier to become validators. Because if you're, if you're a validator, uh, you have to basically store the, the network history of the blockchain that you're validating on. And as the network grows, uh, that uh, the, storing that network history, the, the network history itself gets larger and larger, obviously, and storing it becomes more of a problem. And what you don't want is a situation where it becomes so expensive. You need so much storage space to store the whole history of the blockchain so that you can, you know, that you can refer back to it to, to, to ensure transactions or balances or whatever are are what they claim to be. Um, if it becomes too difficult to do that, then it'll lessen the number of validators who can participate on Ethereum. So the purge, I think, is basically looking to to sort of to slim that network history down to get rid of, you know, have a bit of a spring clean, if you like, and mm. enable more people to store the store the network history. And then the splurge, in in Vitalik's words, um, I quote this from a Decrypt article that was talking about it, uh, all the other fun stuff, um, <laughs> so, which is a bit little... <laughs> Which says it all, really. Yeah, so uh, the splurge, we don't really know too much about that, but that's going to be lots of smaller upgrades, you know, to, 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 to kind of build on everything that the merge, surge, verge, and purge have, have, have taken before. So, um, yeah, that's what, we've, that's what we've got to look forward to uh, with, with Ethereum. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, everyone, for listening. Um, I hope, uh, may the merge be with you, uh, and let's, <laughs> I hope you can join us... <laughs> May Vitalik bless you, uh, and I hope you can join us next time.